What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo, and I do believe that it's time for a Wi-Fi battle. You'll notice in this video that the team that I use is different. We're going to take a break from Mega Hound Doom, and uh, this is actually a lot older battle that I had here. And it's against Exia, I believe that this was a pass for my battle, I'm not completely sure. It was an, a weird match, and I thought it was worth... Uh, narrating just because uh, I get to kind of explain some of the weirder stuff to my Pokemon. So, of course, in this battle I have Mega Gardevoir, uh, I have my weird offensive yet really, really bulky Excadrill that has Swords Dance, but it's really just designed to be a spinner that can take several hits. And then, of course, I also have my choice Banded Gorgeist, which is really, really fun to use. People do not expect Shadow Sneak to hit as hard as it does. And it can also live Shadow Sneaks from Aegis Slash and one hit KO it back, which is a nice little utility there. Especially defensive Togekiss is annoying and I hate it, but I use it. Then we have um, defensive Tyrantrum. This one's max HP, max defense. Tyrantrum can run a lot of different sets, which is fun. And then I also have, uh, I believe that this was Scarf Diggersby. So uh, my opponent has several things there. I, his team was just really balanced. So I wasn't necessarily worried about any particular threat, but if certain Pokemon of mine went down before his, that would make his a lot more difficult to deal with. For example, if I lost, um, maybe, you know, something like Diggersby would be a little bit more difficult to deal with Aggron, uh, or if I lost my Excadrill here. Now, I did not want to risk him going for Iron Head right at the beginning of the battle, which is why I switched out. He could have just gone for Stealth Rocks, which is what I kind of expected, but I'm not worried about that because... I can just get rid of his rocks and pop his balloon. Now right there I think he expected me to switch out because he went for Thunder Wave, which is fine by me because I just get to get rid of those wonderful, wonderful entry hazards. I thought he might just set up Stealth Rocks again, so I went for uh, my own Swords Dance here. Because most people don't expect Excadrill to run Swords Dance. Now it, that was kind of a last gen thing, and I didn't even use Excadrill last gen at all because it went uber before I really got a chance to use it. Now Ninjas comes out. Ninjas is annoying because he has several things on his team that can take advantage of the speed boost. And um, it's it's hardly ever good to switch out from a Ninjas. It's just, you're just going to give it a free substitute. Well, now it's a little easier to play around because of Infiltrator hitting through substitutes. So here I just really wanted to stay in, keep on using Rock Slide, force him to just pass speed and not get any other boost or uh, a substitute pass as well. Really wish I had something with the fast Leech Seed so that uh, it could have passed the Leech Seed as well, that would have been fun, or a Yawn maybe. But uh, I, I was expecting him to Baton Pass right there, and I didn't know what he would go out into, so I just went for another Swords Dance, thinking that I could live anything that he went out into, and he decided to go out in a Mega Garchomp, which is so scary! That is so very scary! Um, and he definitely, I, he, I think he definitely was just like, oh yeah, he still has a Balloon, so now I have to go for Brick Break. With that much damage, a stab, super effective earthquake definitely would have KO'd. So I'm happy he didn't pop my balloon with Aggron or Ninjask. Uh, here he goes for a Shadow Sneak, and we get to see just how bulky my extra drill is. Uh, as I live that, and I get to KO him with an earthquake. Uh, that I think that he even got max damage with the with the EV spread that I have on my extra drill with the HP, attack, speed, defense, and specially offensive EVs. It's it's like I was trying to EV it for. VGC, which is, that's a whole complicated other metagame. Now, I just stayed in against his Toxic Croak there, because I didn't want him setting up on me. Uh, and I wanted to see what he was going to go for. I really thought he would switch. The Earthquake was painfully obvious, but he must have predicted me to predict him, so he just stayed in there. Went for his own Earthquake, likely predicting me to go out into something else. Because, uh, uh, I don't, I, he obviously didn't predict Gore Guys, otherwise he could have gone for a Poison-type attack. But, I don't know. And here I didn't want to get hit by a Sucker Punch, so I just switch. I just do a manual switch out to my Tyrantrum. 
He gets a critical hit, which doesn't really matter. Like, it does a lot of damage. But I think after Leftovers, I may be able to live another Earthquake. I get up my Stealth Rocks, which is really, really nice for that Ninjask. And again, I think he's over-predicting a lot just because um, he went for a Poison Jab there. Uh, and this was pretty early on in 6th uh, Gen, so he may not have known Tyrantrum's typing. I'm, I'm not completely sure. It was a Power Supply Battle. But uh, there we go. Those Stealth Rocks almost took out that Ninjask. He did use two Substitutes earlier, which is the same as using getting hit by Stealth Rocks once, so he obviously is smart enough to, at the very least, change his EVs to have two Stealth Rock switches there. Uh, he just goes for Protect to get a little bit of speed off to someone. And I didn't know who he would go into, and I didn't want to switch out. So I just went straight for Ye Old Dragon Claw, which doesn't do very much because I'm a defensive set. But that's okay, it's important to get off any damage you can when something is that speedy, then uh, you can normally take it out with a little bit of either priority, which is unfortunate because my priority is a ghost type and Porygon is normal. Not very good. But he does have a life orb that is good. I can wear it down with his own life orb. I figure Togekiss can take a couple of hits, uh, which is exactly what's going to happen here. I am going to slow him down though, just in case he gets some weird hacks or something like that. Because uh, Togekiss could have even lived a crit right there. And now that he's slowed down, I can just hit him with an air slash to finish him off. So Togekiss definitely showed his prowess there. Porygon Z has a very high base special attack. So it's nice to be able to take those hits and retaliate. Now Agron comes back out. I did pop its air balloon earlier with the rapid spin. So we're going to do the exact same thing. Uh, just paralyze it just to make sure there's no rock polish shenanigans or anything weird. He goes for stone edge. That's okay. I really just wanted to make sure my diggers be could outspeed it and finish it off here at the end of the battle. Uh, and that's going to be a pretty easy thing to do here because Diggersby hits so very hard. I could have gone for um, my, that particular code, Togekiss has Air Slash, Thunder Wave, Encore, Roost, so it's more of a supporting set. So Thunder Wave was really my best option there. I didn't want to switch out. But I hope you all enjoyed this match here. It was uh, an interesting match. I really like using different EV spreads on Excadrill. He can do a lot of different things. I've seen Assault Vest a good bit with Excadrill as well, just because his attack is so naturally high. So he's one of those very versatile Pokemon, and that's probably why he was um, banned just being that bulky alongside that high attack and then Sand Rush doubling base 88 speed. Uh, that's a reason for a ban too, so it, it's great to see the changes from 5th to 6th gen, just because with the nerf to weather, of course, it's not that big of a deal if he's that fast. He's going to run out of steam before he plows his way through your entire team, presumably, um, presuming your team is built somewhat balanced. But now, it's fun using an Excadrill, so maybe we'll see something weird, like a Mega Excadrill, where it's just drills, and it's just a, a complete call out to Gurren Lagan. and I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, I, I didn't post this battle yesterday, just because I had a really, really long day at work, and it's never good to narrate something when you're in a bad mood, uh, with your first world problems being infinitely multiplying with a serving position. Uh, and also, I, I substituted, and, and it's just like, that was not a necessarily a fun day. So, now I'm back. It's Saturday. I hope you'll have a great weekend. I'm in a better mood here as so I head into my wonderful 15, 16-hour shift. And, um, yeah, and I might post the battle video tomorrow if I have time. Uh, just because I have so many good battles saved up. Posting only two a week is going to take a long time to get through these. So, if you all would like to see more, I am willing to post more. But I've rambled on long enough. You guys have a great weekend, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye now.